five o'clock when Celia Kibler, parenting expert, will be on to chat about how practicing good parenting skills is an act of self care. My question for today for you listeners is what are some parenting hacks you use to maintain harmony in your household? And um, that is a really good question. So most of you know that I am a yoga teacher and my approach to self-care activism uh, heavily involves the greater practices of yoga. And so I have a yoga move that I have found very helpful to people in learning to calm down. And I know a lot of times, particularly in this era, with all the technology and information bombarding kids and this crazy environment we've created for ourselves that could be possibly the worst environment that could humans could exist in with all these crazy blinking lights and blue screens and controlled temperatures and controlled everything, activities, et cetera. Kids can, a lot of kids are suffering from hyperactivity and attention deficit disorder. And one way to help anxious kids and parents in particular to calm down is a really simple hand gesture called a mudra. And mudras are used in yoga to help um, facilitate certain reactions in the body. The idea is that the brain and the hands are irrevocably connected. Thank goodness too, right, Ron? (laughs) We can feel stuff. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. And so... Um, because the brain is so intently connected to the hands, um, what you do with your hands is almost immediately transmitted to your brain. And a lot of times what your hands, your hands react before like words can get to your mouth. So have you ever seen people like, you know, talking and they're using their hands to talk and they use gestures, whatever. A lot of times their hands are moving before the words can even come out of their mouth, right? That's how fast the communication is between your hands and your brain. So mudras are hand movements that help your uh, to send a message to your brain. Oh, clever. Yeah, it's very clever. <laughs> so you put your hand in a certain position. Like a lot of times you see this, right? When people are meditating, their first finger and their thumb come together and the other fingers are coming out. Mm-hmm. This is a grounding practice. Oh. So, yeah, pretty pretty crazy. Right. So, yeah. So a life hack. Yeah, it's a life hack. So this is a life hack for helping to reduce anxiety. And I teach this to my clients, my private coaching clients. And so you hold your hand out like, you know, all the fingers are spread wide. Right. And then you close your thumb across your hand and then you take all four of your fingers and wrap them over your thumb. All right. This is Adi Mudra. All right, do you feel a difference in your energy already? Ron's like, I just drank a cup of coffee. (laughs) He drank the coffee. I did not. Please know, as an act of self-care to myself and the universe, I avoid caffeine. I don't. So this calms you down. Okay. This is, it's a calming mudra. So say you're at a, in a, in an intense meeting at your job, for example, and you're getting, you know, hot under the collar and, you know, something's going on in your meeting that is making you nuts, but you know you shouldn't say anything or, you know, it's what, you're, what you want to say is completely inappropriate. A bite your tongue moment. That, yeah, that, I know that doesn't happen to you listeners, but <laughs> occasionally that I'm in that situation. I love that one. What I'll do is I'll, I'll practice the Adi Mudra. I'll cross that thumb over my my hand, wrap my fingers around. You can just keep your fingers under the table. Nobody even knows what you're doing. It calms me right down and I'm much better able to handle the situation. I've used this mudra many times with my clients. It's been very successful. Wow, that is neat. Isn't that amazing? So little yoga hack for helping to reduce anxiety. You can teach this to your children. Um, Please know that do not punch somebody when your hand is in the Adi Mudra uh, because you will break your thumb. This is the totally wrong way to punch somebody. Did yes, you know that? Yes, I noticed so you that. always punch, punch with your thumb out. I'm, I'm not saying, I'm not suggesting you should ever punch anyone. Um, Quite the opposite. Yes, but 
you know, if you're like this and, and also, you know, you could be in a stressful situation at home or walking down the street or wherever you can still just curve your fingers over your thumb and that will help calm you down. Good in traffic. Yes. Excellent in traffic. So, um, that's my little parenting hack for today. Um, Unfortunately, my children are grown up, and so all of the good advice that Celia will be passing along to us in the second hour of the show will be wasted in my household. Um, I don't even have pets anymore to practice. To practice, do you have a pet, Ron? No, I have, I have a robin. I talk to in my backyard. A robin. Yeah. Oh, we're not good friends. Oh. Do you practice good parenting skills with this robin, or is it an adult robin? I think it's an adult robin. No, we just okay. nod at each other. Awesome. That is fantastic. All right. So um, this is Mary Burris. This is Self-Care Activist. I'm here on WRWK LP 93.9 FM, The Work, serving Chesterfield, Henrico, Richmond, Goochland, and Hanover. And later at 5 p.m. What? what? You forgot the power 10. Because somebody needs to add it. Oh, I'm sorry. So just for those of you watching on Facebook Live, <laughs> we have cheat notes on the wall across from where I'm sitting. And, oh, wait, does that say Midlothian? There? Midlothian? It does, it does say Midlothian. Okay, awesome, but it does not say Powhatan. No. All right, so Powhatan listeners, welcome. So happy you're here. Um, you know, I was thinking next week I might start the program with an ohm. Oh. Yeah, ohm. Um, the universal sound that reminds us we're connected to the universe and that the universe is within universal energy and that the universal energy lives within us. That's totally an aside. So um, last week, I just want to mention, I was in San Diego. And so we had a special show. Al Condi um, of Elysium Fitness was here. He he and I work together with clients oftentimes. And, you know, he's a great guy and he has an awesome radio voice. So I had him here doing the first hour of the show. And for the second hour, we had a pre-recorded segment with myself interviewing the Harry Lopez. And if you don't know who Harry Lopez is, he is just an amazing person. So I want to uh, give you the information on how to watch that interview on our Facebook page. So you would go to the Work FM on Facebook, the Work FM Facebook page, mm -hmm. and you uh, once you're there, just click on videos and you'll see the videos section and then you'll see playlists and you'll see a bunch of the recorded shows on playlists on that page. Scroll down and you might have to Scroll down. What did you say? You had to scroll down a couple of times. What does that mean? Uh, you'll, you'll find some sections will end at show more. And you have to hit show more twice to get to the section, alphabetical section, where Mary's treasures are. Ah, yes. They put me... They, you have to dig for the real buried treasure, and that would be the self-care activist. <laughs> so um, once you get down to self-care activists, you'll see a split screen. That's me on the left. I have my hair up and Harry, V, Harry Lopez is on the right. Harry is an incredible life coach. He works primarily with the Latin community. He's based in Miami, soon to be based in LA. And uh, he is absolutely fantastic and he has some wonderful um, gems to share. So if you missed that, please go to the Facebook page and catch it. Um, he is just amazing, like I said. So, um, and we talked about a lot about self-care strategies that he uses and that he recommends for his high-powered clients. So speaking of shows, um, that was the past. We're now in the present. And a little bit later, Celia Kibler will be joining us here on Self-Care Activist. She is a... Um, a parenting specialist. She's created a community called Pumped Up Parenting, and she's she'll be talking about um, childhood behavior, parenting styles that will um, how parenting or good parenting um, is an act of self care, and having a harmon having an harmonious home is important. 
So that's today. And then next week, oh my gosh, I am so excited for next week. Ron, do you remember what's going on next week? No. Ha ha. You're going to love this because it's going to be a party in the studio. I have Slash Coleman and Heather Umberger coming. They are both laughter yoga leaders, as I am also a laughter yoga leader. Um, But uh, they are, Slash has started the RBA Laughter Club and they were going to be talking about laughter yoga. We're all going to be talking about laughter yoga. And if you can catch the show on the live stream on Facebook, we will be playing laughter yoga games. We'll be talking about how, wow. how laughter is amazing for your health and how it is an act of self-care to practice laughter yoga. Would you like to hear my laughing yoga story? Yes. It's funny, my mom died. Or should we save it for next week? <laughs> no, let's go ahead. Let's well, hear it now. It's a funny story. My mom died a couple of years ago, and as she was in decline, we would try to find things to take her to that were exciting. So one day I gave her a copy of the Chesterfield Observer, and I said, Mom, what would you like to go to? And she went through it, and she said, of all things, my mother has never shown any interest whatsoever in yoga. She said, I want to go to laughing yoga. Wow. So all of my sisters and I took her off to Coldfield Library, and we went to this laughing yoga. And you know what laughing yoga is. It's not that a 95-year-old woman ordinarily would plug herself into. So mom, <laughs> mom, mom sat in a chair, and she smiled more than I've ever seen her smile Aww. since dad died anyway. And we all were rolling on the floor laughing, and she was smiling broadly on her chair. It was charming. Aww. It was charming. It was what it was, She let her hair down, you might say. She had a chance to really see people for some reason she couldn't let herself be that happy ordinarily and she couldn't laugh but it was incredible to watch her well i am so that's that's a beautiful story and it's it's especially beautiful because um i've seen miracles happen with people practicing laughter yoga in particular which is one reason i am so excited to have these two people in particular coming to the studio to talk Mm -hmm. about it because they have uh laughter yoga sessions here around town and um if you're interested in knowing where they are i think you can go on facebook to rba laugh club um and find out their schedule i know they have a website uh, you could probably just look up slash Coleman on Facebook and find that that's, yeah, slash like dash, but S L A S H. And um, they just, it it's so fun. And I'm sure we'll be hearing stories or, or hearing stories about people who um, have overcome grief and overcome other situations um, through laughter yoga. I have a, wonderful story to share about that, but I'm going to save it for next week. Shared to the comment section. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much. You said it's shared to... To the comment section of the video. To the comment section of... Of this video. Of this video. Yay. Okay. So um, if you're driving and you couldn't get that information down, you can come to the Work FM Facebook page scroll, go to videos and scroll a million miles down to self-care activist and uh, information will be in the recording of this show. Right, Ron? Yes, yes. Yeah, great. Wonderful. Okay, fantastic. So that's coming up next Thursday on Self-Care Activist. So I want to talk a little bit about um, Celia Kibler, who is our guest today, who will be coming on at 5 p.m., um, Celia is a multipreneur. She's not just an entrepreneur. She's a multipreneur. She is a force of nature. <laughs> Let me just tell you that. Uh, she's a pioneer in children and family fitness, and she's the co-founder, as I mentioned, of Fun Fit Family Fitness, uh, which she started in 1987. And she currently operates Fun Fit program throughout the Baltimore, Washington, D.C. metro area, including Northern Virginia. And she's internationally recognized expert in childhood obesity. So Celia has been featured in major, by major networks, including Fox News in New York and D.C., Washington, D.C., CBS affiliate, published in articles by the Associated Press, the Washington Post, the Washington Times, and the Baltimore Sun, and other online, local, national, and international newspapers. 
and she's been featured on the radio and she'll be featured on the radio today um, through national and international free radio, blog radio, and a lot of others. So she was invited and an invited an advisor to the National Children's Museum in Washington, D.C., as well as adjunct faculty member of Montgomery College located in Maryland, um, and particularly for the Montgomery College Challenge Program. In addition, she's has written training manuals and the majority of the music that is used in her programs. I didn't know that. I didn't know she wrote music. That's amazing. Many of which are included on her first CD, Jiggles and Giggles. Holy cow. I didn't know Celia had a CD. It's not possible to pull that up, is it? We uh, play some of her CD run? Well, it's probably protected, but it would be amusing. To I see. bet you it's not. Jiggle and Giggles. <laughs> I bet you Celia would give us permission. <laughs> Jiggles and giggles. She, she may well. It sounds cute. Oh, just enable them. Sounds <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, she's got a second CD in the works too. This is awesome. Aside from teaching, Celia stays busy coaching parents and caretakers on issues involving toddlers through online courses, eBooks and Facebook groups uh, that offer free advice and daily live broadcast to assist all parents. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. So um, you are listening to The Work FM, WRWK 93.9. This is radio of, by, and for the people. Yes. Bringing you live simulcasts of local events, such as the Richmond Veg Fest, June 26th, um, Poor People's Campaign at First UU, September 26th, Oh, these are last year. <laughs> it says very clearly, check the dates. And oops, I did not do that. <laughs> All right. So I want to tell you a little bit about some of the shows we other shows we have here on WRWK. Um, we have Citizens Voices on Saturdays with Sunday. Oh, that's a Sunday. Excuse me. Sunday. Thank you for correcting me. Um, and that's J Tub. Yes. And here's a little fun fact. J Tub and I went to VCU at the same time. That's right, we're the same age. Um, Citizen, he looks a lot younger than I do. Citizen Voices with J Tub at 2 p.m. on Sundays, and in the frequency of Hope with Stephanie at 7 p.m. on Mondays. On Tuesdays, we have what is this, M2 Love Show at 7? I'm sorry. What is this? Ms. Love Show. Ms. Yeah. Oh, Sarah that's West an I. Love Show. Sorry. Okay, awesome. Uh, and on Wednesdays, we have H-E-R, Human Equal Rights, with Leslie at 7 p.m. That's every other week. Yes, I see that. And Richmond Business Babes with Lisa at 11 a.m. on Thursdays. Yeah. And then, of course, self-care activists, that's us, right now from 4 to 6 on Thursdays with me, Mary Burris, and sometimes Al Condi. And then on Fridays, after Amy Goodman, Dem Democracy Now!, General Assembly this week, right? That comes and goes, yeah. It we, comes we and goes. We've a lot of seasonal stuff, what comes and goes. Um, oh, okay. And on Fridays, we're actually going to start a, a series of fundraising fun shows uh, that'll be starting tomorrow night. Fundraising fun shows. Yeah. Are we fundraising? fundraising right now? Fundraising. How can you oh, farm. Fun, fun. I mean, fun farm. What's a D? What's a D between friends? Oh, fundraising. Fun. Exactly. Fundraising. But speaking of fundraising, yes. it only costs forty dollars a day to support WRWK, and it would be awesome to have your contribution. So if you like what we do here. Please just, uh, how, what is the best way for people to donate well, money? There are two ways. If you go to the website, you'll see a very distinct donate button. It says, uh, it, on both menus uh, that I supervise, it says donate. But if you go to the Facebook site, it's kind of odd. They took off the donate button, and now we have a, we have a button that says uh, contact. Contact equals support. If you click on the contact button, it'll take you to, of all things, PayPal. Oh. And you can join up there. I joined up there. Nationally, I joined up for 75 a week, a month because, you know, 
I have small change, you know, floating around. I'd rather do that than have a lot of lattes, wouldn't you? Well, I don't drink lattes, so I would say yes. I would rather have great information coming from a public radio station than to drink lattes. Exactly my point. That's absolutely true. Thank you. Because... Yes, I gave up caffeine 27 years ago. Wow. <laughs> I know, people never believe me. <laughs> but that, um, when um, Ron talks about our website, he means www.theworkfm.org. So that's www.theworkfm.org. So feel free to donate any amount. Is acceptable, but forty dollars a day is super helpful. <laughs> yes, that'd be just perfect. Forty bucks is great. That means you'd be supporting today, and you'd be supporting self care activists, which would be great. An excellent idea. Thank you. Occasionally, I come up with excellent ideas. <laughs> and um, also, speaking of sponsorship, I just want to mention affordable home inspection. So, support for WRWK is provided by Affordable Home Inspection. With over 15 years of experience, Jeremy Rowan, owner and master inspector of Affordable Home Inspection, offers insured and bonded home inspection, including heating systems, air conditioning units, roof condition, electrical service, and interior, excuse me, interior structural elements. Serving Richmond, Charlottesville, Fredericksburg, Petersburg, Williamsburg, and Alexandria. More information at affordablehomeinspec.com. Clever. Yes. Clever use of words. Yes, indeed. I thought you were going to say something clever yourself. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's way well for that. So, uh, yes, this is The Work FM. I'm Mary Burris. I am of Flowering Cactus, and this is Self-Care Activist. And if you would like to call in with a question about parenting or a parenting hack in particular, something that you've done that has changed the atmosphere of your home, that has made your home a more harmonious, wonderful place, or something that just got your kids to do something you wanted them to do, please call us at 804-464-1089 and let us know all about that. So I'm trying to think if I had any parenting hacks when I was raising my kids. I remember reading this amazing book. And of course, my youngest is 19. Oops. Um, and is an absolutely wonderful person. Um, and I read this book by these two psychologists. You know, we could probably look it up. Ezo, E-Z-Z-O is the name of these psychologists. Um, and they wrote these fantastic books about raising children. And um, I have to say that that these books were a little religiously oriented. And that's awesome. Um, for some of us, that is really great. Oh, Toddler Wise. Is that one of them? Um, I've got the Yes, Gary Ezo. Ezo.info. Yeah, Mm -hmm. has a bunch of stuff on the uh, ESO parenting controversy, ESO child learning philosophy impacts. Um, Washington Post had an article on them back in 99. Yeah, they, I, I don't know what they say, but they worked. They, it worked. They were great books and um, uh, it really changed the way our household operated and helped to get the kids, you know, actually involved in the process of being a family, which hmm. was pretty amazing. Do you think that having an outside agency like God watching over you helps? Something bigger than mom and dad, watching mom and dad too? You know, um, I, I'm not, no. No? Okay. No, I mean, that, I'm, I'm, I'm hesitant to really jump on that because it was not, the way that mm, that's not the way that I chose to raise my children. Um, obviously, I think spirituality is super important sure. um, because I'm a yogi, Quaker, Buddhist, <laughs> and so I <laughs> I don't have just one. I don't have one spiritual path. I have many, <laughs> um, but um, I think the 
what was so great about the Ezo's theory, and this is a, a husband and wife team that write these books and they're both psychologists and they have kids of their own. I think what I really loved about their philosophy was that it was about making the children responsible without using fear and as a, as a method. And I, I know that this is untrue for many people, but there are some uh, people I think that might use a higher power in a way as a way of threatening, which is fear, which is parenting by fear, which I think ultimately fails in the end. So I um, really loved this opposite, this other approach, which was empowering children to to contribute to the family in a meaningful way and uh, just offering up ideas for, um, you know, rather than, than a strict punishment reward system, which is not always proven to be the best way of handling parenting. Mm. Anyway, Celia is going to know all about this when she gets here uh, at five, when she pops on the line at five, Celia Kibler. She is the parenting expert. I am not the parenting expert. I am the expert on yoga. <laughs> so there you have it. Um, and the question today is what parenting hacks do you have that have brought harmony to your home? Um, okay, so I do have one really great parenting hack. So Sam, when Sam... Oops, that's our phone. Hello. Hello. Is there someone on the line? Oops. It's an automated call. Oh, great. <laughs> oh, we got open. <laughs> Sex calls for elders. That's exciting. What was that? What did you say? It was a, it was a recording call from a gentleman who said he was looking for somebody comparable to his uh, interest area. Oh, great. So that is not me. So um, <laughs> whatever, whatever that is, it's not me. So thank you. I really appreciate your interest, but um, I'm, I'm not, not in that department. <laughs> We're getting the funniest calls these days. Mm. We're getting the best calls these days. Anyway. So we were talking about parenting hacks, and I was talking about um, Sam, my youngest, who is a fantastic person. And um, I found these videos uh, that it was the whole idea behind it was sort of a um, Montessori approach. And like I, they were about like teaching kids how to put their own coat on and tie their own shoe and to fold laundry and make up their own bed and all this great stuff. And so, you know, Sam was excited because he got to watch these videos and then he got excited about doing these things. And so people were astounded that my, you know, three-year-old was cheerfully folding laundry <laughs> and, you know, that was helping in the kitchen and doing all these things. We were like, how'd you do that? I was like, I got these magic videos and they were just fantastic. All right, so um, here we are on WRWK. Okay, great. That would be awesome. So we can hear from Celia early if we want. So I think that's a brilliant idea. I'd love to hear from Celia. Um, just a little background on Celia. She is a mom of five grown children. Yes, I said five. Um, Two, she, she gave birth to, and three, she gained through marriage, and she's a grandmother of seven. And um, this having this family has given Celia, pardon me, over 37 years of real life experience in all aspects yeah, of parenting, yeah. including separation, yeah. divorce, step parenting, early education, through college, drug, alcohol abuse, incarceration, empty nesting. Oh, that's me. Silly, turn your video down, please. Celia, turn your video down. So, um, she's often referred to as the baby whisperer, and her love and passion for children is evident in every aspect of her life. Hello, Celia? Hello, Mayor. 
Mary. Hi, Celia. How are you? Mary, how are you? I'm great. Thank you for having me on your wonderful show. Oh, thank you so much for being on the show. I'm so excited to have you. And just one second, I'm going to give a station ID so people know where we are. We're on the work FM. That's WRWKLP 93.9 FM, the work. And we're serving a lot of places. That's all I'm saying. And if you want to call in with a question for Celia today, the number is 804-464-1089. I don't think they can call in because I'm here. <laughs> we have two phones, so it's all good. Oh, well, yeah, two present. phones. Oh, good. Yay. Oh, yay. Oh, yay. So, Celia, thank you so much for agreeing to be on the show. And, um, you know, I want to talk about with you. I want to know more about you, and the, but I just want to remind the listeners of what the theme is today, and that is um, how practicing good parenting skills is an act of self-care, and we're going to get to that in just a second, but would, do you want to tell us a little bit about you and like how you got into this? I would love to. Well, I got into it um, back in 1986. Two, mm. <laughs> when my daughter was born, and that, of course, started my love for children, but I've always kind of loved being kind of a teacher, and I've always had, you know, just a fondness for kids. I, I just love kids. I've kind of always been bonded to them. In 1987, my sister and I started Fun Fit, uh, Family Fitness, and we were actually asked by Baltimore County Recreation to create a kids program that was um, not a sports directive program that was all inclusive and non competitive, and that's what Fun Fit is. Fun Fit is a, a fitness program that's basically based on fitness. And since my sister has a fitness background, um, she used to be a you know a fitness teacher. She um, we created the program very much like a fitness class. So if you go to a, a gym and you take like an aerobics class, you're going to warm up. You're going to have high energy in the middle, and you're going to cool down. That's exactly how our classes are based. Wow. And we operate throughout the D.C. metro area, like you said area, uh, earlier, in the Baltimore area. And we focus on 11-month-old through elementary school. And basically, um, my love for toddlers, which is my specialty, although I don't you know, exclusively do toddlers, is um, was born there, you know, where I just, you know, I'm, I spend almost every day with them. I teach them in the mornings. And over the 30-some years, I have just really learned about everything there is to know about a toddler. I've been in a relationship with them in some way or other, be teaching, be parenting, mm -hmm. grandparenting, whatever. I have, you know, had this relationship with toddlers and how to make their lives better. Uh -huh. And I've always been asked, about my methods and being a teacher of classes that involve parents and toddlers, I um, have always been asked by parents by advice on their, you know, their children. Mm -hmm. So I've been really counseling parents for years and years and years. And I decided a few years ago, as I saw parenting trends change over the 30 some years, that parents really needed help these days. You know, it's, it's a different world now than oh, it was yeah. back in the early 80s when I raised my mm -hmm. children. And um, parents need a lot of help. There's a lot more working parents. We have the internet. We have all this information out there. You know, we're inundated with, you know, pros, cons, good right. advice, bad advice. And, you know, and parents don't know where to turn. So, Celia, so, uh, let me let me ask you. Years ago, I decided to go into coaching. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, so yeah, I knew you were a coach, a parenting coach, and I forgot to mention that. So thank you for, for mentioning that yourself. And I have a question for you. So yeah. someone just texted me, what is the number one problem that parents have with uh, their kids? Or what is the number one thing they come to you for help with? Okay. That was, so that was ended with a preposition. Go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. Is there more to that? Sorry, I interrupted you. No, go ahead. Okay. So probably the number one problem that I hear from parents, it's kind of twofold, is that I, I never have enough patience and my children don't listen. 
Like mm. if I say, what's the one thing that really bugs you as a parent? Those are things. My kids don't listen, and I don't have any patience. And um, it's what parents don't realize is it's more their methods of parenting that's creating this scenario than their kids just simply not listening. Mm. I could take a parent in 90 days from a totally what people will look at as an out of control kid to a totally, you know, a, a family that is full of harmony and cooperation and listening and, you know, and um, contributing children that are actually doing things like you had mentioned before that your child, you know, was folding clothes and all that. That's all possible. It has a lot to do with the parent, more to do with the parent than the child. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, like I, like I said, like I, I have a master's degree in education. And so when Sam was, and I have a, a, a son that's 10 years older, right? So I made all, all the parenting mistakes with number one son, right? And I was determined to have a more harmonious, peaceful home the second time around. And, you know, I had, I had a little more, um, I was less fearful and had a little more strength as a parent, right? So, um, and so that I found that to be really helpful. So I found this video about, oh, getting your kid to do stuff. Yeah, <laughs> let's do that. So that worked like a charm. So what um, you're talking about that lack of patience is, um, yeah, and I certainly felt that way as a parent. I would get so upset with myself when I lost my temper. I felt so bad. Um, you know, I just had a lot of guilt surrounding that and losing my temper never, ever once helped the situation, right? Exactly. So what is, um, what do you, what do you help? I mean, like, what do you teach parents? Like, what is, what is, uh, something, a hack for parents that you would give them that might help them increase their level of patience? I mean, well, and, and like I said, like the angle of the show, like what we're talking about is how learning to do these things is an act of self-care, right? Because it makes the entire household more harmonious. Absolutely. Like, you know, we were talking about earlier, you know, chaos breeds chaos. Mm -hmm. And chaos makes for stressful environments. Stressful environments, you know, stress itself, as you know, in what you do, you know, with yoga, and you are the amazing yoga teacher, as I told you, because I've taken a class from you now. <laughs> and, Thank you. Um, you. You know, stress is so, um, so hurtful to your entire it just is so horrible to have all this stress in your life. And when you're running a chaotic household, parents don't just feel the stress, but the children do. Yeah. And then they grow up being anxious and worried, and there's a lack of confidence and self-worth and self-image. All of that stuff is affected by a highly um, stressful, uh, you know, conflict filled household mm -hmm. and so you're not when you create more peace in your household and more harmony you're not just relaxing your life you're relaxing your children's world and the there are about four really big and they're not even secrets but we can call them secrets mm -hmm. to having a calmer household and um I mean, there, the biggest parts of parenting is being consistent, being calm, um, setting up your consequences prior to them going on, being proactive so you know what's going on, and, um, the, and being intentional in everything you do, and which is for life, too. You should always be intentional in what you do. But being calm, you know, if you, if you're home, if you come home, for instance, and you've had a day that's just really tried your patience and you're already irritable, this is not the time to walk up to your kids if they're having like a sibling spat and get into it with them. This is the time you say hello to them and you say, you know what? I'm a little stressed out right now. I need to go have a break. And then you chill yourself out. 
mm-hmm. for a good five minutes before you even approach the kids. And then you can come from a place of calm, which when you, you know, when you approach your children calmly, they then can approach you calmly. Right. But if you approach from a place of aggression, they're going to be too easy, you know. Right. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. And one of the things that um, I talked about a little bit earlier today on the show was um, a little a little yoga hack for helping to calm yourself down, which is a really simple mudra, which is a hand position called the Adi Mudra. So I'll share that with you later <laughs> so you can have that information too. So we're on WRWK 93.9. Serving Chesterfield, Henrico, Richmond, Goochland, Hanover, Midlothian, and actually the whole world because you can stream it. Right, Ron? I'm sorry. No, never mind. I'm just messing with you. (laughs) Ron wasn't paying attention. So I I was like, I just scared him. Um, Yes, that's, and we have Celia Kibler, uh, parenting expert with us today. He's been kind enough to uh, help me talk about how good parenting skills are an act of self-care. So Celia, um, consistency is super important, right? In, yeah. in good parenting. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, I, yeah, I think that was really difficult for me as a parent. So um, I'm, you know, I don't know. I knew it was good to be patient. I knew it was good to be consistent, but sometimes I just didn't want to. It was just too hard. Do you ever have that? And and the thing is, especially with small children, because, of course, you want to kind of get it right when they're young Mm -hmm. because that makes them getting older as they enter into their tween years and their teen years, it makes that life a lot better. And... um, but, of course, if they're already there, it doesn't mean you can't, you know, work on it when they're already there, too. They will, when you start changing your ways, your children will be like, well, Mom, that, that's pretty awesome. I, you know, I like what you're doing. I like one of my clients, her biggest thrill was that her boys, who are teenagers, said, Mom, you know, you look so happy. And that's the key is when you are more confident in your skills and what you're doing with your children, it does make you happier. And happiness is one of the best things you can do for yourself is be happy and laughing as you were talking about laughter. Right. You know, and um, it's, it comes down to really like, so, like consistency. Sometimes you have to be consistent whether you want to be or not. I mean, it's a lot easier to come home and say you're trying to, break your child of a habit, like giving them the bottle. And you come home and they're fussy and they're whining and you're like, oh, here, just take the bottle. Right. Well, now what you've done is whatever hard work you've done up to this point is gone. You've you've wrecked it. You just gave them a bottle and you have to start all over again. Right. Oh, yeah. The the same with potty training. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yes. You know... Um, Thank you so much for bringing that up because I remember, like I I said, my children are 10 years apart, right? And I made all the mistakes with son number one, right? You know, every time he made a noise, I'd get up and go to him. And, you know, we did not have a full night's sleep in that house for almost four years, Wow! right? Because I never properly trained him to, to sleep by himself, right? Cause, cause I would let him get, you know, so son number two, <laughs> I, was, I was much more, you know, like, um, I remember like saying, I'm not, I'm not going to suffer through this potty training stuff again, the way I did with son number one, right. Who was almost, right. sorry, Max was almost three, almost four again, before he was really potty trained. And, um, Sam was like, I did potty training in a day, one day. Wow. And the and the way the reason it worked is because there was no compromise after that, right? 
Exactly. And the exactly. sleep thing, that was especially tough. And I tell I'm just I was just like, but it worked. We did it in we did it in less than a week, sleeping through the night. Um yeah. I took took my husband and myself into the basement. Sam was sleeping on the third floor, right? And we had a baby monitor because he my my hus- husband was really upset, you know, to leave the baby. I mean, I almost had to chain him into the basement. I was like, <laughs> I was like, you are not going up those stairs and look not you're not even going up the stairs because you're not going to that baby. I don't care how much he screams. You're not going to just this we're doing this one time and we're doing it now. And it only took, you know, two or three nights. And Sam is one of the best sleepers I know. So what so it's that consistency, right? It the, is. And it's not it, it's not easy. There are times like this they're not easy. Mm-hmm. But if you stay consistent with them, they you know, they they will work. So it will work. It's like, you know, when, when I first had my daughter, Lauren, and she was um, born pretty big baby. I always have big babies. And she was like six months old. And she wasn't rolling over. And the little friend she babysat with was rolling over. And I went to my doctor and I said, she's not rolling over. And he'd go, well, look at her. Look how big she is. You think you can roll that body over? <laughs> no. And then he goes, so let me ask you a question. And I'm like, what? He goes, do you know any 20-year-olds that can't roll over? I'm like, well, no. She goes, what are you worried about? And ever <laughs> since then, I even tell my parents that. I mean, think about it. You know, like potty training. Do you know a 20-year-old that's not potty trained that's wearing diapers? No. They all eventually get it. And the sooner they get it depends on your consistency of them getting it. You know, just like with your sleeping. I, I'm a sleep coach for parents as well. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when um, I remember, well, when I was raising Lauren, she's 37 years old now. We didn't have baby monitors. They, they didn't exist. They weren't invented yet. Right. And um, she slept upstairs and we were downstairs. And then one day she decided instead of going to bed at 7 o'clock at night, she was still going to bed at 11 o'clock at night, which was well past my bedtime. And I was like, oh, no, 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 you're not doing this. And I will put her to bed a half hour early every night. And she will cry for like 15, 20 minutes, and then she falls asleep. And then I do it a half hour early the next night until she got back to going to bed at 7 o'clock when she was supposed to go to bed at 7 o'clock. Right. You know, and you just have to be consistent and not give in, not like, you know, because there's parents are so quick to jump. And everything. Right. You know, and, and parenting is not about making your child necessarily comfortable, right? All the time. Right. Or they're happy. They're to be happy all the time. Right. It's about, like a, it's about yeah. doing things to make the household harmonious ultimately, right? Yeah. And, and to give them it's responsibility. About harmonious and creating skills and abilities and um, teaching your child's brain how to handle their emotion, which is another huge thing that parents don't realize. And this is probably a good tip for your parents. Oh, yeah. Talk a little bit about that, Celia. That is so important. Let me tell you briefly about the brain, um, because I'm also a brain coach, but uh, very simple terms. So simply, simply, when your child is born, they are born with, a brain that is not fully developed at all. In fact, the human brain doesn't fully develop, are you ready for this, mm-hmm. people, and we'll both, till you're like 23 years old. Right. That is when your brain reaches its full development. <laughs> and so for some of us, it may never get there. The way they are. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the thing is, with a toddler, a toddler doesn't have self-regulation. They don't have logic. They don't have these things as adults that we have. They are almost pure emotion, which is why when you see a toddler, they go from being crazy happy to having a tantrum to being mad to being Celia, to Celia. Being upset. So that you know, and like in three seconds later, they're happy as can be again. 
Right. Because these emotions just go through. It is your job as a parent to teach them how to regulate those emotions, to teach them what to do if they're angry, what to do if they're sad, what to do if they're disappointed. But, but uh, hold on, Celia, I want to ask you a question real quick. Right? I just want to, I'm speaking to that, to that, I mean, it's important that they experience the emotions, not to stuff them somewhere, right? Yeah. But, yes. but, but also how to, how to experience them in, in a way that's appropriate in the moment. Would, Absolutely. Would you agree with that? Okay. Yes. Yeah. And, you know, and don't like, like parents that go, stop crying or I'll give you a reason to cry. Oh, yeah. So people have been saying that to kids forever. Well, you may not agree with the reason that they're crying, but they're crying already. So they must have a reason. Whether it's one that you like or not, whether they're crying because you said no, it's still a reason. Telling them that they have no reason to cry or no reason to express you know, express their emotions is going to stifle their emotions so much that you will wind up with emotionless children. And do you want them to be that way when they grow up? No, you don't. Emotions are a good thing. You just want to teach them how to deal with them, how, you know, what happens when I feel a certain way. You know, I would say the two biggest muscles to exercise in a child is their disappointment muscle and their waiting muscle. Mm. Because welcome to life when things don't always go your way. Yes. And they will not always go your way until the day you die. <laughs> that's you know, that's so true. Trying to get children to be happy all the time or always giving in to them, you're setting them up for disaster as they get older. You're not doing them any good by creating like this mysterious, mystical world of happiness. Yes, you could, you know, be as happy as you can, but when your child gets disappointed, when you have to say no to them, and they're running into a busy street, and they're going to get killed, and you don't say no, when you're in a toy store, and you're buying gifts for people, and there's no reason to buy a toy for your child just because you're in a toy store, you can say, well, right now we're here shopping for Jason. We're not here shopping for you. We can put it on your we can put it on your birthday list, whatever the holiday might be. Right. And if they get upset, they get upset. They have to deal with the word no. Right, right. Deferred gratification is also yeah. a really important skill to have in life. Absolutely. So, yeah, so so absolutely. Instant gratification Do you have a question? in this day and age. Oh. Okay. All right. So, you know, I would say a great thing to do with your kids is summertime. A lot of people are off. A lot of people are working on projects for your kids. A great thing to do with your kids is create a family garden. If you have the land where you can, you know, plant a garden. Or if you don't have the land, get the pot that you can keep in your kitchen, plant herbs, plant a vegetable that you can control in a pot, you know, plant flowers. Whatever, because it's the perfect thing to teach a child delayed gratification. Oh, yes. And how to nurture something that grows. Yes, absolutely. And That's brilliant. It's amazingly good and, for you. And it's also really, I mean, there's there's a myriad of lessons there. I mean, patience, but also, you know, you're learning where food actually comes from because you might not know as a, as a kid growing up in a typical suburb or in the city, uh, you know, nowadays you may never see a real plant with a, with a fruit on it or a vegetable, right? Growing right. out of the earth. So there's a lot of good lessons there. I'm just going to take a second to do a little station ID and then we will continue. And Celia, it's awesome having you on the show today. So I just want to say that. And we are on WRWKLP 93.9 FM, The Work, serving the world, not just Chesterfield and Ryko, Richmond, Goochland, and Hanover, or Midlothian, or Powhatan. The entire universe can hear us on Facebook. Um, and if you have a question for Celia, who's a parenting expert, and she's an, she is a coach, also parenting coach. Um, now's your shot to get to get her to answer your 
parenting questions, 804-464-1089. That's 804-464-1089. We're happy to take your call. Um, And next week, Celia, you're going to love this. I have Slash Coleman and Heather Umberger, who are laughter yoga leaders. Celia, here's an aside. (laughs) Celia is also a laughter yoga leader. So the world... It is, and um, she is great at that too. And so um, they're going to be on it, and we're going to be talking about laughter yoga as a medium for self-care. So that will be totally fun. That's next week right here on Self-Care Activist. That's Thursday, June 20th, is that right? From 4 to 6 p.m. That's awesome. Right now I've got... laughter and the joy. Yes. Right now I've got Celia Kibler, and um, she is a pioneer in childhood and family wellness. Not only is she that, but she is the co-founder of Fun Fit, the Fun Fit programs. And um, I understand, Celia, that you also are an expert in uh, the prevention of childhood obesity. Can we talk a little bit about that? Um, be happy to. And um, so in this, back to in this day and age, yes, um, a lot of what affects our children and another thing that parents have to take control of is the physical and, of course, cognitive wellness of their kids and the control over, you know, another popular question I get parents asking me all the time is, Well, how do I get my kid off of their video game or they want to play Fortnite forever or they want to watch YouTube? And I'm always like, you know what? The beauty of a video console, the beauty of a tablet is it's portable. Unplug it and put it away. (laughs) Go, girl. With your children. Yes. And run around and get exercise. And, you know, and, you know, some people go, well, I don't have, like, a good place to run. And I'm like, do you have stairs in your house? Yes. Well, go race up and down the stairs. You know, people pay big money for step aerobics. <laughs> That's go right. your house. Walk on them. You know, and, and there's a lot of things you can do in your home with balloons and beach balls and things that, you know, won't. You can build forts. You can build obstacle courses. Things that won't, you know hurt your house <laughs> and things keep your kids moving and things that we used to have to do in the good old days to entertain ourselves on a rainy day yes when we weren't yes. outside on our bikes or running around in a pack with the neighborhood kids which which doesn't happen anymore really right right well and people are so fearful mm. about you know well, if i let my kids outside someone's going to take them or you know it's just and and the thing is you prevent a lot of that by getting to know your neighbors and being more of a community in your community. Yeah. You know, creating that family like we used to have where we knew everybody who we lived next door to. So and, I, w- I want to bring up that point for a second because I was okay. um, thinking about um, I have some friends who are, are relatively new to the area and they homeschool their only child. And um, one of the things that I have noticed is, you know, they are often, um, when one of them is, is working or out of town or whatever, the other one is, you know, really stuck, right, at home. And, right. and, I, and I thought about them and I was like, gosh, you know, if they had a, a wider community, of friends, then, you know, it's like, it would be easy to say, hey, can our kid come over, you know, to your kid, you know, and, and hang out and we can exchange that. Or I remember having a babysitting co-op where uh, we lived when Sam was little. And that was so great. Like you had adults taking care of your kid. A lot of times they would have their kids if the, if the time you wanted to be away was early enough. And it was just like this really nice community, like you're talking about. Absolutely. And, you know, and especially if you homeschool your children, 
one of the aspects that you don't bring them at home when you're educating them is the aspect of being social. So mm -hmm. it's really important for a homeschool parent to get involved with, there are a lot of churches, there are a lot of um, homeschooling groups that get together and they do these, you know, they take field trips together, they spend social time together. There are mom groups you can join if you have little ones. There's play groups, there are classes like the class, our fun fit class. If you have something like that, our class is a mommy and me class or a parent mm -hmm. child class. Mm -hmm. And the parents participate in everything we do. And if you have, um, you participate in a class like that, it is not just, uh, you know, increasing the social benefits to children. It's adding to your social life. You're meeting people who have kids from child age and, you know, that you can make new friends with. Yeah, I remember. And I have the friends that are in my bump of classes who became friends right there in class. Yeah, one of the greatest acts of self-care that I participated in when, when my oldest, Max, was a baby was finding a mom's group. And, you know, as a, as a first-time mom, uh, it was great to have not just the support, but, you know, the, the shared uh, journey with these yeah. other people and meeting, you know, their spouses and, and et cetera. It was just so great to say, you know, oh, I'm having trouble with this or, or that issue and having, it really was one of the best self-care things I could do was have a sounding board of people who completely understood what I was going through in the moment. Right. Yeah. And you know, new parents, like you say, Mary, new parents always feel they feel alone. They feel, and, mm. and, and new parents, are, I don't think there's a new parent out there who hasn't gone through the feeling of, you know, what have I done? <laughs> I have this baby seven days a week, 24 hours a day, for the rest of my life. <clears throat> uh, excuse me. I have literally lost my mind. What have I done? <laughs> and, yes. um, and they think they're alone, and they think they're a bad parent. For thinking this yes but I guarantee you if you approach any mom any dad at some point in the first year of that baby's life they have thought this mm -hmm. and what's nice is when you get a group of other parents they realize you know what I'm not such a bad parent I just happen to be in shock <laughs> over the fact that you've totally changed your life in one instant it's and true okay. it's so you know? true and there's nothing Nothing that can prepare you for it. Absolutely nothing. Exactly. Don't, don't you think? So, um, There's nothing. You can, the, probably the biggest thing that could prepare you for it, and even this can't, is like moving in with someone that has a new infant. Right. And even that can't totally prepare you for it because it's not your child. Exactly. Yes. That's why... Being a grandparent is so awesome. I'm not a grandparent, but I can imagine like, because you awesome. can have all awesome. the fun <laughs> and then just, and none of the responsibility really, you know, like you can do all the fun things and then it's just like, okay, yeah. good luck with okay, getting yeah. them potty trained. It, is, it is awesome. The, the hard thing is there are a lot of grandparents now raising their children. Like for me, for two years, I had two of my grandchildren living with me. Really? And so I became a parenting grandparent. Mm -hmm. And now, I mean, because I'm a parenting coach and I believe in certain things so that children come out to be amazing human beings, there are things even as a visiting grandparent I'm going to still hold my children to. Right. But when you're a when you're a parent in grandparent house, and so many people are these days, mm -hmm. so many people, um, you have to you you have to kind of lose that. Okay, well, you know, you're with grandma or grandpa now, and you just get to do whatever you want because you can't. Because you're you're responsible that as a parenting grandparent, you're responsible, right? Right. Exactly. Yeah. So you're right. And, this um, is this is something that I see more and more of in our culture. And, um, you know, I attribute that to both parents are working and have 
careers that are important and, you know, that you are need two jobs in order to maintain some sort of a um, comfortable lifestyle, right? right. right? Um, and I don't mean like yacht and mansion comfortable. <laughs> I mean like a decent home and, you know, appropriate clothing and good food and food on the table, that right. kind of thing. Um, expensive world out there. It is. And, uh, so could you speak a little bit to that? Like, um, as a grandparent who is in, I mean, well, why don't you tell me how did you come into parenting your grandchildren? Um, well, I, I mean, are you comfortable sharing ever, that? Um, <laughs> You know, my, my, and it's actually, you know, I, I run a very successful blended family. I have two children of my own and three, I came through a marriage to the husband I'm currently married to. And although all those children are grown and they now have families of their own, we have always been a very um, successful blended family. You know, we, we go, we're, we enjoy holidays with my ex and his wife. When his wife's two daughters got married, which are my children's stepsisters, mm -hmm. we were invited. And people are like, why are you invited? And it's like, because we are family. And whoever, you know, if people get, get past the egos and realize that this is your children's family, all these people, you know, are their family. Right. You know, my, my grandchildren have many grandparents because they come from blended families. And the two children that came to live with me are in fact my stepson's children. They were my first grandchildren that were lived close to me, so I've always been very close to them. But my stepson and his wife had issues and it wound up that they, at the point of where they were with their lives, they really, they called me they're not paternal grandmother to care for them because I always took care of them. Like when they were little, before they were in school, they would come and live with me for a month and they'd go home for a month and they'd come back for a month. And mm. I was always very involved in their lives. So mm -hmm. It was logical that I take care of them. Right. And that was fine with me and fine with my husband. And um, so they moved in, you know, I had to get them enrolled in school. And the hardest thing was I was on a bus schedule again. <laughs> and I was like, oh my gosh, I have to like wake up for buses. And right, right. <laughs> and wow. No, 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 not buses. But, um, and then eventually my son, my stepson, however you want to refer to him, um, he did move in after about the first two months that I had the kids. So he was living in our house as well. So they had their dad there. But, he worked and, you know, and I, because I work out of my home the majority of the time, um, you know, I was their parent. And yeah. my youngest, his youngest, I am, um, I, I really feel like he views me very much as like a mother figure to him, mm -hmm. even more than a grandmother, because he lived with me for a year when he was first born. His, his parents were there, too, but they lived with me. And then he lived with me for two years when he was three and four. And, you know, I, it's I'm like his mom, right. you know. And um, it's when it's like that, you have, you know, they have to be on schedules. They have to have routines. It's not like they're just spending the weekend. Now, when they come, like, they'll be with me for three weeks over the summer. I, I try to take them as much as I can, but they, they're both in school full time now. So that's not always possible, but, right. um, you know, you have to still have certain rules and, and schedules and routines like any parent should have mm -hmm. set up in their lives. You know, during the summer, they have a summer schedule when they come to be with me for three weeks. They will have a summer schedule, even though they're visiting grandma, only because after they leave me, they are back at school. Right. And if right. I let them stay up till 10 in the morning, how are they going to get up for school when they go back? Right. Yeah. And they're going to be in mm -hmm. misery. Mm -hmm. So they're going to stick to that summer schedule the three weeks they're with me. There'll be times they can stay up a little later or wake up a little later. That's all good. But overall, 
they it's will the be in similar. their summer schedule, mm-hmm. and their summer schedule and has always included reading time. And right. I, they are avid Fortnite fans. And there will be plenty of time for them to play Fortnite so, and survive. So and the schedule. Be plenty of time they can live without it. So the schedule is super important as an act of self care as a parent, <laughs> because if you you know you let the kids have a crazy schedule, then they can be too tired to do the things that they should be doing, or cranky, or or whatever. Um, I had a neighbor once who was so wise. This woman had six kids and she was so smart. She never allowed her children to do a sleepover, completely sleepover. You know, if they went to, they could go to a slumber party, but she would pick them up at 11 o'clock at night and then she would return them at seven o'clock in the morning or, you know, 7.30 or whatever. Right. But that she, you know, she needed her, wanted to make sure her kids had a good night's sleep because otherwise it made, it broke down the entire household. <laughs> I'm so with her. Like, <laughs> my kids never had sleepovers. I'm and, like, yeah, boy, you go to any kind of party you want. Sleepovers? No. Yeah. It makes me crazy. Mm-hmm. And who suffers? Mommies and daddy suffer. The kids. <laughs> yeah, the kids. Because the kids are out of control. <laughs> yeah, they're out of control, and so yeah, the parents suffer. And I think part of parenting is taking ownership of what you're comfortable with, rather than caving into what your kid wants. And I think we were talking a little bit about that earlier, right? Exactly, or being influenced by other people who are like, oh well, they're not letting their kids sleep over. Blah 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 blah. You need to do what's right for you and your children. Right. They are your children. You're not getting a second chance at this childhood thing. This is it. Yep. You know, and it's like people say, if you look at your summers, as you have about 17 summers to spend with your children. Right. And sometimes less. That's not very many. If they're five, you got 12 left. Right. You know? Yeah. Yes, indeed. You have to make it important. As yeah. important as anything else. Yes, absolutely. I agree. And um, I'm sorry, we're going to have to take a just a little brief station break here. This is WRWK LP 93 FM, The Work, um, heard by the world. <laughs> and if you have a question for Celia, you can call 804-464-1089. That's 804-464-1089. One oh eight nine. Operators are standing by. Yes, Ron, the operator is standing by. We can't. We are so looking forward to your questions, and so I also just want to say that support for WRWK is provided by the Thrifty. Quaker, located in Midlothian Station Shopping Center at the corner of Midlothian Turnpike and Coalfield Road. The Thrifty Quaker sells donated items to support the work of 12 varying, mostly local charities each year. This month's charities are Smitty's Cat Rescue Shelter and Operation Catnip. Together, they are helping homeless cats get neutered and find forever homes information at thriftyquaker.com. So um, our question... I love that. I'm such a cat person. I know. I saw pictures of your kids. Oh, and my program's called Pumped Up Parenting. And you can find us at pumpedupparenting.com or on Facebook as well, which I forgot to tell you guys. Awesome. Well, you get to keep telling us. But um, okay. I wanted to say, I wanted to ask you about boundaries. So we kind of touched on that. But why boundaries are so important in terms of being a good parent and looking out for yourself as a parent. Do you have anything to say to that? So a child that lives without boundaries, people go, oh, I'm, you know, I'm just going to let them do their own thing. The problem is that when a child lives without boundaries, they feel out of control because there are no Children thrive on knowing that there are limits and that there are somebody watching over them to make sure that they're safe and secure. And when you don't put boundaries in place, you basically take away their safety and security. And mm-hmm. a lot of parents don't realize that, but it's absolutely true. And then a lot of parents don't even know what a boundary is. So a boundary is when you're like, okay, 
So when we sit at the dinner table and eat, there are no tablets, there are no cell phones, which includes parents. And we put them away. And then the child's like, no, no, I want my tablet. I want my tablet. Oh, well, okay, maybe this time. No. In your home, the boundary is that is, a, you know, a screen time, free time. Mm-hmm. There's no screens at the table. Another boundary is how you speak in the home. In our home, we speak with kindness. We smile. We don't, you, we always use our manners. We don't call people names. That's how we speak in our home. And if you don't follow that boundary, then there will be a consequence because as you grow up, you know, when you make your choices, there's always consequence out of how that choice comes out. And so those are things that, that are boundaries. And when you give children boundaries, when you give them limits, when you say, you, I'm going to put on this timer and you know what? You can have five minutes more or seven minutes more of playing this video game, and then it's time for dinner. Mm-hmm. And the child picks seven minutes, of course, because two minutes longer. <laughs> Although young children may pick five because they don't really know what time is. And they'll learn, though. And then you set your timer, and the timer goes off, and it's time to come to the table. If they fight you about it, Or they're like, no, I'm not done. I'm not done. One more minute. One more minute. Don't let your kids do one more thing. One more minute. One more book. One more story. One more this. One more. One more you to death. So little hints, don't fall for the one more thing. (laughs) One more is like a bad word. Yes. One more. One more. One more. One more. Well, dad, mommy, don't leave. Don't leave. I want one more story. I want one more kiss. I want one more song. I want one more. (laughs) Mm -hmm. It'll go on your entire life. But when... You know, they don't agree to something they've agreed to, which is how you empower your kids. Let them be a part of setting up these boundaries and limits. It will empower them to think before they act. Then, you know what? Then the tablet goes. Okay, it's gone. It's gone. You get back tomorrow. And tomorrow, when I say time's up and the alarm goes off, you turn it off or it will go again. Right. You know, you are ultimately the boss of them. Right. I know some parents get confused about this. Yes. <laughs> but you're the boss. You can't be the boss. Why? You are the boss. Right. So. <laughs> right. One of my one of my favorite things that my kids did that just would and it still makes me chuckle to think about is, you know, a situation would come up that was unanticipated, whatever it was, you know, something out of the blue that I wasn't thinking about. Uh, and um uh, you know, I would catch one of them in in a, a, a lie or or a deception, right? And and I'd say, well, you know, why why did why didn't you tell me about this F grade or you know that you skipped school or whatever? Why why were you hiding that from me? And be like, well, mom, you know, you're gonna ground me for a month and whatever. And I'm just like, you know. I hadn't thought about that, <laughs> but now that you mentioned it, that's a good idea. Like, and, and Sam particularly would keep doing that, would make up these elaborate punishments. And I'd be like, you know, I hadn't thought about that, but now that you have created that, that's probably a really good idea. You know, it was just so funny. And I'd be, and, and he never learned like never picked up on like, if you just keep your mouth shut on what you think I'm going to do, <laughs> because you're so much more creative for create, you know, for creating oh, your own are. punishment than I am. Like I'd be like, oh, I was thinking about just making you unload the dishwasher, but now that you think you should be grounded for a month, <laughs> you for know? A month. we're going with that one. <laughs> <laughs> this was so great. Like, Oh my God, they just crack me up. So um, they are, they're hysterical. And teenagers, I just love them. Teenagers are especially interesting. I think entertaining. They are so entertaining. You think of them as built-in entertainment. Yes, yes. I and I honestly, because, you know, when as you get older, you'll be entertainment to them. So yes, good. yes. And if this, if this is, if we're talking about parenting as an act of self-care, I think one of the best things you could do for yourself as a, as the parent of a teen is to just step back and enjoy the show. Like you said, yeah. like you just have to be amused by it because you know, they, this is the time for them to make mistakes. 
And, or at least I think so. Uh, Celia, you're the expert, but I feel like if you, or if a parent uh, prevents their teenager opportunities to make mistakes um, and, and sort of figure through them, you, it's kind of cheating the children out of uh, preparation for adult life. What do you think about that? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, think about it. You know, the most successful people in the world have failed over and over again. But when they fail, they don't go into like a state of depression. They realize, oh, well, this is work out. So let me find a new path. And that's what you want to teach your kids. You want to give them the opportunity to try something. When you are parenting them, when you are, you know, sitting around with the kids and going, you know what? You guys were fighting a lot today. And, you know, what concerns me is you're not really thinking about each other's needs. And so what do you think we should do next time when you're sitting there fighting over the same truck for five minutes? And they'll think about it and give them a chance to respond. And they might just say, well, maybe I could get another truck while, you know, Freddie is playing with this truck. And then you know, we could set a timer for five minutes and we could switch right. trucks. Great idea. Put their ideas into action. Number one, you will teach them, like, whoa, mom actually or dad actually think I'm intelligent. And they actually think I have great ideas. And they're actually putting my idea into action, not theirs. They're not just yelling and saying, next time. You know, this is what's happening. I'm throwing the truck away. Right. Let them get involved in solving the conflict. And then be sure to say, and you know what? If this doesn't work out and maybe you get fight again, we'll come up with a new plan. Because right. you know what? A mistake is always something you learn from. I always right. say to people, have fun making mistakes because they're meant to teach you. Right. They're meant to make you grow. They're meant to help you reach things. Look at all the things in the world. Plato, it was a mistake. And now it's Plato. Sticky notes, a mistake. And now they're sticky notes. <laughs> the light bulb, what is Edison said, it took 1,000 tries to make an, a light bulb. Right. And he goes, and the people said to him, well, how do you feel that you made a 1,000 mistakes trying to make a light bulb? He said there weren't a 1,000 mistakes. It was a thousand ways, ways that not I found to make out, a light bulb. Not the way to make a light bulb. Yeah. And then I found the way that worked. Right. And that's how you want your kids to look at life. That is that they know that if this isn't working out, and that's the best self care for you as well to not be so hard at yours on yourself if something happens, and for you to teach your children because you know what mistakes only mean you're growing. Right. They only mean that you're going to grow to the next level or the next great thing. Because Absolutely. You're learning from your mistakes instead of going into total breakdown and the deep depression. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yes, indeed. So um, I was reading your bio, and um, this is just incredible. 37 years of real life experience in all aspects of parenting, including separation and divorce, step parenting, early education through college, drug, alcohol abuse, incarceration, empty nesting, grandparenting, extended family boundaries, and extensive experience raising toddlers. Holy cow. Is there anything you haven't done as a parent? Interestingly, yes. So the only thing I haven't done as a parent, although I have worked in the special needs community um, for over 30 years with children that are blind and adults, the, the, I, you think you mentioned that I was an adjunct teacher from Montgomery College in their challenge program. I taught fitness to adult um, people that were in the challenge program. And um, and their challenge program is their special needs um, schooling program. Mm -hmm. But um, And I've worked with all levels of people and kids in special needs. I have not raised my own special needs child from mm -hmm. birth. Um, I do feel like I've raised 
other people, <laughs> like my friend who has an autistic child, her child's been in my classes since he was under one year old and through the time he had about 20. So I kind of feel like we grew up together. But, and I've never had an adopted child, although mm. I've worked, my best friend went through um, adoption a few times. So, you know, I've been very close to it. But ha my stepkids struggled with drugs. Um, my one stepson wound up going to jail for a mistake that he made. Mm. And now they're all doing great, great. They're doing great. They have better jobs than I've ever had. Or make, I should say, they make higher salaries than I've ever had. Yes. <laughs> but um, they have wonderful families. They're happy in life. They're content. They've come out of it all fantastically um, and broken away from the drug alcohol thing. And But that's the thing is, you know, it's hard for children when they're going through separation, divorce, when they have a parent that's not as amicable, you know, and that does that thing that divorced parents like to do where they call each other names and they play the kids against each other. Yes. And that's what my um, husband's ex used to do a lot. It was very hard on those kids. Mm -hmm. It's very hard. They it's it's so much more time. damaging on and, the children, don't you think? Huh? It's really damaging to the children when the, the parents... It's so damaging. Yeah, it's really awful. You have to put... You may, you may totally not ever want to see that parent again, but you always put those kids first. That is that parent's so other parent. You are trashing a father or a mother... You are trashing half of that child, and that's how they feel. They don't feel like you're trashing the, their parents. They feel like you're directly trashing them. Right. Yeah. And in effect, you are because you're crushing their spirit. You're crushing their confidence. You know, you are literally trashing them. And it's horrible. It's horrible. That's the worst thing about all the divorce is that so many adults, let me say that word lightly, <laughs> can't get beyond themselves. Right. Oh, absolutely. Like we're right for their children. Yeah, I agree 100%. So I just want to say that um, Ron has, has handed me, uh, what is this that I'm this looking the at? The comment section. Of the, the comment section of the Facebook page. And Carolyn Smith says, yay, Celia, yay, Mary. Love what you're saying, Celia. Um so there you go. Thank you, Carolyn yeah, Smith, for for, thank you for cheering us on and for listening. We love that. Um, this is WRWK 93.9. I'm Mary Burris, self-care activist, and this is The Work FM, and it's broadcasting all over the world. That's what I'm saying. And the universe. <laughs> um, and we are here uh, speaking with C ah, la, la, Celia Kimbler. <laughs> And this is Radio Of, By, and For the People. And just to remind you, on Sunday, Citizen Voices with J-Tub is at 2 p.m. Uh, you can tune in or you can watch later on the website, right? On the Facebook page. Facebook Live, yes. Facebook Live. So, um, oh gosh, Celia, I had another. Oh, yeah. So when you were talking about your four secrets of effective parenting, is that mm -hmm. correct? Um, and then I want to talk a little bit about pumped up parenting because cause I want to know more about that and how people can get involved in it. Um, one of the four secrets you said is being calm, right? Say it again. Being calm. So you need to be calm. Oh, calm. Calm. Yeah. Calm. I say calm because um, I'm from the South, and you say calm because you're from Balt <laughs> Baltimore. New York, Baltimore accent. Yeah. So I being calm, C A L M <laughs> is the word we're looking for, regardless of your accent. So um, being calm is really important. So, what are some of the things that you recommend for your parents? Uh, little hacks uh, on ways to to stay calm in in the midst of what could be considered a parenting crisis? Um, well, one of my favorite tips, and I actually have a patient's playbook to develop more patients for you. Oh, wow. But, I need that. Um, can I get a copy of that? Yes, you can. Awesome. And um, <laughs> I still it, need it. I don't even the, have kids at home. The key is, and this is where self-care comes into a lot of it, because one, uh, probably the first, 
section of the 15 tips I give you to grow your patients is self-care, is getting a good night's sleep, mm. eating healthy foods. You know, if you don't sleep well, you're irritable. So forget about whatever anyone else is doing. You're a grouch. You know, you're not smiling. You're not happy. Nobody wants to be around you. You're grumpy. You're tired. You're, you know, you know, you want to get good sleep so that you are calmer and you can handle your emotions better. You want to eat well because garbage in means garbage out. Right. So you want to eat a healthy diet. You want to eat and feed your children healthy food. If you're having a salad and fish, why are you making your children chicken nuggets? This one thing. Oh my gosh. Yes. Thank you, Celia. Something different than what they eat. My children never ate something different from what I ate. That's why they eat all kinds of things now. Yes. They didn't just get hot dogs. I remember one time I went with my um, family, my uh, my um, husband's family, to the beach, and we were having shrimp for the grown-ups, and they were making a pot of hot dogs for the kids. And I'm like, why are we making that? And they're like, oh, our kids won't eat shrimp. I'm like, my kids will eat shrimp. <laughs> right. <laughs> they'll eat that 10 times over a hot dog. But, you know, you all have to eat healthy because, like we say, when kids eat garbagey food, they feel like garbage. So you want to right. eat healthier. You want to exercise. You want to practice meditation. You want to do relaxing forms of life, like reading mm -hmm. and um, being outside, getting fresh air. Fresh air is so cleansing and rejuvenating. If you're stressed out inside, go outside. Take your kids. Your kids are stressed out. Go, go out there. Play, have fun, and while you're at it, go play and have fun with your kids. Right. Fun is awesome. It's awesome to have fun, and you feel much better. And exercise and fun and laughter is like one of the biggest stress reducers. So if you're feeling stressed out, go laugh. Right. Tell jokes. So take laughter yoga. So yes. So it's like. It's like in the words of Dr. Seuss, it's good to have fun, but you have to know how. Right. That's from the cat in the hat. It's one of my favorite from quotes ever. Exactly. And you know, yeah, Celia, you it's really fun. It's really <laughs> interesting hearing you say all of these things because um, a lot of this is what I do in my coaching when I'm training people um, in uh, yoga, in, in yoga right. in particular, because, uh, you know, in Ayurveda in particularly, which is the, the Eastern science or yoga of uh, good health and long life, these are all the things that we're talking about. Um, meditation, you know, taking that time out to connect with your inner voice, um, having that five, 10 minutes, even as a busy parent where you are in quiet, and sitting still in silence without your dogs crawling on you, without your kids crawling on you, you know, alone in your own energy, right? And how, yep. how utterly important that is for your brain to give it a rest. Um, walking in nature, being outside, just as you were saying, is so important for your brain health alone yep. to see, you know, uh, grass and trees and little animals running around and, you know, hearing natural water babbling on rocks or whatever it is that where you are in nature, maybe you live at the beach, maybe you live in a desert, you know, whatever it is, but experiencing fresh air and sunshine yeah, and take nature. Take your kids on a scavenger hunt. Yes. So go outside, make a lift, find a stick, find a, you can do it for the little as the kids. Find off the leaf, screen, bag, off we're screen gonna time. Leaf, we're going to find the sun. We're going to find a stick. We're going to find a wall. We're going to find this. And then, just like you say, you're not just walking. You're getting involved with nature. Yes. You're hearing. You're seeing. You're touching. Yeah, absolutely. And this is, you know, using all of your senses, which is extremely important in, in yoga. And just, and observing. Being in the moment and observing. I think, um, I, I have to say, one I have a pet peeve, and this is, I see even babies. I see people 
with babies in strollers. They're walking outside in the world and they have given their kid a phone. And the kid is looking yep. on a screen at a screen. You know? And I'm like I know. Makes me crazy so or or they're in a restaurant and everyone is everyone sitting at the table instead of interacting and having com- having a conversation with each other or playing a game of tic-tac-toe on the you know on the paper, paper on the table or whatever they're all on a device can you speak a little bit to that i mean i know from yeah. from reading a lot of research papers from working on a book with a neurologist a couple of years ago how damaging that is to your brain but particularly to developing brains or or kids you can yes i'd be happy to and you know another thing that drives me crazy while you're on the restaurant subject why do we now have to have tvs and all oh restaurants? my gosh all yes restaurants have TVs. you know what do we need and they're always on the news yeah be more depressed together as a people no as and a, we we need spaces TVs, away so. from screens this is so important blue light yes. is damaging to your brain and every 15 minutes a child looks at a screen increases the likelihood or or aggravates ADHD and yes. ADD yes. and people wonder why this is rampant what? so here's the problem that well there's a lot of problems the, yeah. but number one when your mind looks at a screen of some kind being a tablet be a TV be a cell phone you are basically electrifying your brain. So the brain is like having a park. Woo, like all the blue light, things are flashing, things are going. And like people are like, well, you can finish this game, then you're going to go to sleep. Mm-mm. No way, they're not going to sleep. No. They're having a party. That right. brain is going to be a long way to go into sleep. But the other thing, and I, and I get asked this question often. So I'm trying to get my child to talk more. So I'm putting him on these the tablet with these talking things, you know, these, uh, you know, pick your letter A, whatever, the numbers and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And um, it's teaching them language and it's teaching them, you know, um, how to recognize words and, and, you know, develop their vocabulary. The single best way to develop a child's language and vocabulary is to read books. Right. Not electronic books, the kind that have paper inside them that you turn pages and you look at pictures and yes. an actual book. And that is the single best way to develop a child. Language development, I guarantee you, and I'm asked this a lot, every parent that says to me, my child's not speaking yet, should I take them to a therapist? And they're two or they're three. And I say, do you read at home? And the answer is always no. And I say, start reading. You start reading, that child will start talking. And the problem with all the electronic communication is that children stop learning how to communicate with human beings. They stop Mm -hmm. learning human speech. 60% of communication is non verbal cues. There are no nonverbal cues in electronics. So that means kids don't learn how to read expression. They don't know how to listen to tone of voice. They don't know how to look at things like somebody rolling their eyes or waving their hands around. Mm-hmm. You know, just think of all the nonverbal cues, the peace sign with fingers. Everybody knows what that means. Everybody also knows what the middle finger means. <laughs> you know, there's, there's nonverbal cues everywhere. But if a child is constantly put in front of a tablet, a TV, things like that, they do, or a cell phone, there are no nonverbal cues. Our kids grow up texting each other. They're not listening. There's not even barely a person that they acknowledge at the other end of that screen. Right. They're just writing it in and using emojis to express their feelings. Yeah. And what happens is kids don't know how to deal with actual feelings. They don't know how when they come to face to face with somebody and someone speaks firmly to them. What does that mean? Why are you yelling at me? Well, I'm not yelling at you. I'm just speaking firmly. Right. You know? Right. 
and that none of that is learned through electronic interaction. Right. So what is your advice for, um, uh, well, yeah, what is your advice for people who need to curb the electronics? I and mean, how do you present that to them? So this is how I present it, and I know you'll love this because you're who you are and you're a yoga person and all. Balance. Guys, everything, everything in your world requires balance. So I'm not saying take all tablets away. I'm not saying take all cell phones away, take all TV away. I, you know, I enjoy a show on TV. My favorite show is comedians drinking coffee in cars or whatever that is. Comedians <laughs> in cars drinking coffee. Because it's my three favorite things, comedians, cars, and coffee. You know, and it makes you laugh. It's funny. We love funny. Um, but, you know, there's balance. Do not sit your child in front of a tablet for five hours a day. Right. If you have the best time. What are, and what about opinion, making a tablet a, a reward? Tablet and a child is like, say you have a very important sofa, like right now. Right now I'm on the phone with you. Mm -hmm. If I had a child next to me, because this is a phone call that could not be interrupted, it might come in handy to sit a tablet in front of them for a toddler and let them just watch a show until I'm off my extremely important phone call. But then once you're off your extremely important phone call, then you sit down with that child and you give them one-on-one -on -one time with you. You play a game, not on a, not a video game. You play like a game. Right. Like Candyland or put together a puzzle or play a memory game mm -hmm. or cards or whatever. Play the sock game. You want to get socks matched up in your home because we have so many? Play the sock game. Right. In Punto Parents. I don't know if it is in Punto Parents. But it's like go fish. You put the pile of socks in the you all pick up five socks and you hold them up. So you know, who's got this sock? Okay, good. You match it. You don't match it. You pick another one. Celia, those those are amazing suggestions. Absolutely awesome. And I remember playing the sock game at my house. It was so it was great. It was so great that matching game. I loved it. And thank and you. And you get socks matched. <laughs> right. It's a great way to get socks matched and to teach them how to match socks and, and put them together. Um, yes. So I want to do a station ID and then I want to talk about pumped up parenting. Okay. Okay. All you right. So we are on uh, health. <laughs> I did this last week or last time. Self care activist. I'm Mary Burris. I'm speaking with Celia Kibler, who's a parenting expert. And we are on WRWK LP 93 9 FM, The Work. And um, so, Celia, tell us a little bit about this special program you have called Pumped Up Parenting. So, Pumped Up Parenting is basically created through a combination of ways that you can, in fact, pump up your parenting. And um, I go live on Facebook, on my personal page, and in the Pumped Up Parenting group page often uh, with parenting tips and, you know, things that everyone needs when raising children. For the most part, I do focus on raising toddlers, but many of my tips and ideas will span childhood, and I will occasionally talk about teenagers and things like that. And if somebody comes to me directly with something they want to go live, they want me to go live about the dress, I always do. Um, also, I uh, have group coaching programs. I have a great academy that will take you through peaceful parenting, and I work one on one with clients as well. And can literally take a parent or parents in 90 days so that the tantrums and whining end, the listening and cooperation begins, the, uh, you know, the um, mommy, 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 the, the struggles, the fighting, the arguments, the yelling, the screaming, that end, and the calm and the fun continues. And so I basically take people's daily struggles, like they're not eating well, they're not sleeping well, we're co-sleeping, I want to stop co-sleeping, my kid only eats one thing, things like that that parents struggle with on a daily basis. And I fix all that so that there is 
family harm they created in the end. Oh, and that sounds I amazing. Can make a huge impact in your family within 90 days working together. But you can get a lot of free resources as well, like my live broadcast. And if you go in, if you join Pop Up Parenting and you go into the files section, there are all kinds of valuable things that you can print off, the body meditation that you can do with your kids, the combat that before mm. sleep, the dice game, which is a fun game to play to get kids to do chores, um, the, the meal planning game, which is how you get your kids involved in planning meals, because personally, I was not a big fan of it. <laughs> and um, there's a bunch of other things, resources that will help you put more fun into your family and get things done at the same time. Wow. So that's my mission is just to really create childhoods for kids that they don't have to recover from. And in fact, they can blossom from. That sounds amazing. And I wish I had known you when I was raising my two kids. <laughs> yeah, the damage is done. No, but actually, <laughs> actually, I did some, Not you know, what you told me. Uh, uh, one thing that you mentioned that I'm I was really good at, and so I'm going to consider it an uh, an inadvertent pat on the back, is I yep. made sure that my kids had books from day one, appropriate books within their reach, you know, yeah, all the time. So I mean, even those little cloth books were in Sam's crib from the second Sam was born and Max too. And they are both avid readers still. And um, they're both really, um, really great at articulating, um, well, at speaking to people, you know, when they want to. They're really, particularly Sam. It's, it's so important. And it's so important to tune into your children. And like, I mean, if they like superheroes, but they don't like to read a lot, get them comic books. Yeah. Comic books is reading. Reading is reading. And if you get them things they're interested in and they're not big readers, they will read what they're interested about. Get magazines coming to the house. Ranger, Rick, whatever. If they have magazines, um, whatever that game magazine is, which I can't remember what it's called that comes to my house. Game, game something. Mm. But, um, you know, it's like, you know, my son, which will probably shock you now that I've told you everything else I've told you about me, he is an avid video gamer. He's been a video gamer, I think, since he came out of the womb. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> of course, our balance came in. You know, he wasn't allowed to just get on his video console, mm -hmm. all of which he bought from the time he was young. I never bought that child a video console. Mm -hmm. He saved for it, and he owned pretty much four forever. We used to have birthday parties when he was eight and set up four TVs with four video consoles. I have a fitness company, so I own Moon Bounces. We set that up out the outside so they'd have exercise. And that was their, his birthday party for a couple of years. But the thing is, when I, you know, to connect with Kyle, I would sit in there and I'd watch his video game play. And I'd ask him questions. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I'd push buttons. I would push push. And then he would yell at me, but, you know, buttons are pushed. That's like my philosophy. If there's a button, I'm going to push it. <laughs> but, you know, I always found interest in what he was interested in. And now he went to college. He got a Bachelor of Science degree in simulation and digital entertainment, which is a gaming degree. Wow. He went to work for one of the top gaming companies companies in the D.C. metro area and actually the world, but number one game of the year he worked on. And the thing is, you know, you want to find interest in what your children are interested in. Mm -hmm. You don't want to always demand what they do because they won't feel like they have any identity. Right. So if oh, you yeah. want to know how to connect with your child, they're not talking to you, sit down. If they like football, watch a football game. When they play a commercial, your kids are like laughing at the commercial. Talk about the commercial. Right. You know, if they find interest in whatever it is, a car, talk about it. And before you know it, you will be talking about other things, too. That and is, you know, it is so important to connect to your child on their level. Don't always make them connect to you on your level. They're not grownups. They're not going to. Right. That's awesome. That is fantastic advice. So, um, 
do you have uh we are we're almost done with our time i can't believe it but um that's incredible it went very fast it did because you're so amazing (laughs) Mary. you're too much so pumped up parenting by all means reach out to me connect find me on facebook pumped up parenting.com celia kibler.com uh if you want to spend an hour talking to me go to pump up your parenting.com and you can sign up for a time slot and we can talk about what what, where you're struggling. Wow, that's amazing. So do you have any closing bit of advice for parents, um, why self-care, I mean, or how good parenting is, is an act of self-care? So my last advice is don't take the world so seriously. Lighten up. And like <laughs> you had already said, Mary, Look at your kids' entertainment. They're hysterical. (laughs) They're funny. (laughs) Let them be funny. Let them have fun. Play with them. Don't be an observer. Don't sit on your couch, you know, snugged into your telephone. That's not very good for you anyway. And it makes your kids think that you don't even care about them because they don't know what they're doing and you're not even giving them the time of day. And the best connection you can make to your children for your own self, your own well-being is to be with your children. Be present with them. Be with them. Find out how smart they are. Find out how fun they are. Look at all the great things. Look at the world through your children's eyes. Everything they see and everything they do is new. They've only been around for a few years. Something you say, something that sparks them outside. Look at the world that way. If you look at the world as if you've only been around for two years and you look up at the sky and there's a sunset that blows you away, take notice of it. Because it's different every day. Everything's different every day. And you really want to start seeing the world through the, the beauty, the amazement, the fascination and the fun of a child's world really start just recognizing their idea of what's out there. Ah, that's, that is so beautiful. What a wonderful gift that is to parents and children. Um, Thank you so much, Celia, for being on the show today. This is self-care activist. I'm Mary Burris and my guest has been Celia Kibler, who is a parenting expert, who um, is, oh, and you know what else I learned about you that I didn't know? What? That you made a CD and you wrote the music. I had no idea you were that talented. it's super great for toddlers. It's called Jiggles and Giggles. my, My sister actually, who actually has the real voice was supposed to sing most of it, and she didn't. She did sing some of it, but mm. I am the singer on most of it, and that sounds hard to believe with my hoarse voice, but it was in 2008. That is so, so fabulous. So thank you, and Celia. you can go on YouTube and look up Jiggles and Giggles, and you can actually play along with the music with your kids. <laughs> That's a great activity. That's really awesome. So thank you so much for being on the show today, Celia. It's been an absolute pleasure. I know our listeners have gotten... A, a just amazing amount of a great information from you and great well, chatting I with really you. I really appreciate you being on with me and I think you're pretty amazing. Myself. Thank and I you. Know your love you. This is Self Care Activist and Love Fest. <laughs> 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 All right. Thank you, Celia. Take care. Okay. Bye, right, Mary. All right. Bye, bye. You. bye. Bye-bye. Oh my gosh, what an amazing, just, oops. <laughs> That's Celia hanging up. Yeah. All right, so um, this is Mary Burris, healthcare activist. We're on WRWK LP 93.9 FM, The Work. And um, thank you listeners for joining me this couple of hours on Thursday afternoon. Um, next week, I've got, Heather Umberger and Slash Coleman, and we're going to be talking about laughter yoga 
in terms of a self, as a self-care medium and what that is and how awesome and fun it is. And we'll even be doing a couple of laughter yoga games on air. So I know. And uh, so be here for that and um, be ready for a fantastic show. So what are we doing? How much time do we have left, Ron? Oh, well, you've got probably a good minute and a, a half left. A good minute and a half. Yeah. All right. Well, um, I just want to say one more time that if you want to catch my interview with Harry Lopez, who is an incredible life coach who focuses on um, la- working with the Latin population, uh, go to the Work FM Facebook page. That's the Work FM, and uh, click on videos, and then you can see the playlist. Go ahead and scroll down, and you might have to scroll. What do you what do you say that is show more a couple of times and you'll get to self care activist and you'll see my interview last but not least that's right you'll see my interview with Harry Lopez and I want to thank Al Condi again for uh, sitting in for the first hour last week he was great he's awesome so thank you so much listeners this is Mary Burris self care activist WRWKLP ninety three FM. Well, folks, I'm going to move you back to the loop, which is in progress now. <coughs> Thanks again for listening. I had a great time sitting by and moving sliders up and down and watching the screens. But I'm really tickled that Mary had time to spend with us, and I'm sure you are too. So this is the WRWK LP FM 93.9 FM, the Work FM, serving Chesterfield, Henrico, Rispin, Goochland, Hanover, a little bits of Powhatan. And... We're going to move into the loop, which is in mid-sentence, more or less. I'll try and give you a beginning of a sentence. Here we go. And we're going to actually start the next piece of the loop. So, wow, how handy. <clears throat> we just missed the last chapter of George Orwell's uh, 1984, but there's more where that came from. In fact, you can see it in the news almost every day, sadly. Oddly, it's all part of the education of humans. We'll catch on eventually. Don't you wish we could do it a little faster? But we will, I promise. People like Mary and Celia and you, dear listener, will have a role as well. So thanks for tuning in. And here's the next exciting segment of our day. WRWKLP 93.9 FM. Licensed to Midlothian and covering Chesterfield, Henrico, and Richmond. From New York, this is Democracy Now! The judge who put Mula in prison in 2018 when...